We're getting some blue Powerade for rockets. It's part of his pre-game ritual. Don't ask me why. Ask him. What? Why? What are we doing? What are we doing? What do you mean? Oh, you're recording. That's what Always. it is. That's why I Obviously. You. That's why I told you. We're gonna get a Powerade for rockets because he what? can't play blue because he can't play well without it. I think he saw Jonak do it one time. He also can't right? walk either. So he can't exactly. walk either, yeah. It takes three of us. So I used to feel pressure during like my first, my first tournament ever was E-League and I was like super nervous. There was no crowd though. It was really weird. I was scared to make mistakes on stage and that was like the pressure that I had. And it wasn't necessarily for the crowd. Like I've never felt crowd pressure, even though I thought I would. But when I felt the pressure at E-League and I made all those mistakes, it like I, I kind of reflected on myself and I'm like, I don't want to feel that kind of way anymore. And like, in all honesty, like the only person that you're letting down is yourself. Like if you think about letting down everyone else, it's just like, it's gonna create even more pressure. So you need to think about like, what your limits are and like, stuff like that. You can like realistically, thinking about everything else, it's just, it's just gonna distract you. So I don't really feel pressure that much. Yeah, I felt a lot of pressure throughout stage four because uh, we had to have a really good stage four to make plans. And we like had to go five and two or go four and three and hope for other teams to lose. But that didn't happen, especially in a new meta. There's so much you have to think about and like learn and like new heroes and new styles. So it puts like a lot of pressure. There's like pressure on the team to perform, but like it's up to yourself like individually to know like you have to do your best and like that's your limit. Like you can't, if you don't, if you, you can't push yourself so much and like think about the repercussions of like, oh my God, if I don't win this game, we're, we're out of the playoffs. Because then that's when you start making mistakes. That's, that's when you start like going for these like crazy, plays that you don't need to. So like, if you just play how you're practicing, that's more so like, I know it's not like a broken record here, but if you play how you practice, then there shouldn't be anything different than when you play on stage, you know, besides what they're gonna do, but you should be comfortable in your own element. And that's how I feel. I feel pretty comfortable on stage because I just try to replicate what I do in scrims and do the stage. I just take it like day by day. I don't try to like overthink it, like think about two weeks later. I just try to think about this week and every day and try not to stress myself out too much. Like even when I first, going to the Overwatch League stage season one, like the preseason when we had like Soul and Fuel. I didn't really feel nervous, even though the stage was completely different. I think it's just about understanding that like you can only do so much. So if you like worry about other stuff, it's just gonna distract you and make you a worse player. So I, I mean, I think I have a pretty good look on it. So I'm comfortable. I don't feel pressure really. I do understand how much it means like if we lose games, but I'm not gonna let that like hinder me. Like if we, if we lose this game, we're out of the season playoffs. I don't think about that. I just think about this is the match that we need to win. So I'm gonna try my best to win. So it works. It's the Houston Outlaws getting wiped out. Dante will keep the overtime wick burning, but Muma not gonna be able to clip his way back into this fight point either. And it will be the London Spitfire picking up the first map of the series. 2-0 clean. Point goes down, you got Muma on the flank. Muma's gonna be able to touch, and he is going to be the last man here for the Houston Outlaws, and it's not gonna be for long because the window pane has gone up, and that is it. London Spitfire hold on the defense, and they will extend their lead two to zero in maps. It's be tough for them to win an entire map. Oh, that's so annoying. Oh, and Dante, he eats it, or rather Fury eats Dante's Blizzard. Blixer and Boink are gone. Houston Outlaws, they will not be going to the playoffs. They will not get the chance. The London Spitfire, the defending champions from the 2018 Overwatch League season, will deny the Houston Outlaws. I think it was a mix of them like already winning, so they were like overconfident and like just not too focused. And then we were like still pretty focused because we just wanted to win. Like even if it was just one map of the series, we wanted to win. And we like were making jokes. Um, after the third map, like even though we were like pretty crushed, like we still kept our heads high and like shook it off, and then we ended up winning that map. 
because the offense spawned right there at the doors. It's going to take plays from the man like Linkser to turn it around. He needs to come up with the goods quick. Two kills here could help to buy some time. I don't even know how Profit Beautiful. Profit was back at the Widow spot. And Bird Ring takes out Linkser. Is that the first Widow be Widow? I think so. That's uh, Bird Ring, not uh, That's Bird Ring's second kill. But they turn it around. Houston Outlaws. Wiping the floor with the London Spitfire. This is as far as the London Spitfire will go. There's the Blizzard thrown in, and there it is. Perfectly done. Whole hog right out the gate. They are, they are still getting contested. It's two that work their way around the other side here. Prophet and Ocean, both of them die right on the edge. And Houston Outlaws, the last second contest from Fury, but it's not going to be for long. And the Houston Outlaws will pick up a map win here versus the London Spitfire. The Spitfire game was kind of hard. They like kind of played a different style than most teams. Like their DPS would hard flank and their tanks would just play really, really baity. So we couldn't get combos on them. And I don't think we adjusted well. And they were just getting so much value out of their DPS flanking. And we just didn't deal with it well. I don't really look at London being like the game that we lost. Like that's the reason why we're not in playoffs. It's more so like we made so many mistakes in matches prior, stage one. We lost our first two games in the fifth map. We lost to Florida Mayhem when they were slumping and we shouldn't have lost and we were also peaking. I feel personally that everyone on the team felt overconfident and no one really expected Florida to be like so, like trying so hard. But of course, when you're not like doing well, you're gonna try your hardest. And they played upset. It's kind of like how we were. We were 0 7. No one expected us to be good in stage three. And we tried our hardest and we surprised New York and then we beat Shock. So it's like kind of stuff like that. Like you always have to play to your team no matter what. You always have to take everyone seriously because it's so easy to lose the match, so. Top Corey! <laughs> I love Doofus plays on this map. Spots out Guido, so he's gonna be a real threat to Guido. Yep, just hoping for it. Hey, it chucks it in there. EMP thrown in as well, but nobody dying on the side of the Houston Outlaws. Instead, it's all the Houston Outlaws finding the kills. Washington Justice brought it to 99%, but it looks like that's where it ends. Low chance of him getting that EMP for this final fight anyway, but Linkser and Dante coming up the goods with that right now for the Houston Outlaws. And this may be the fight that they've all been waiting for. The silence as well. Sansom can't even get a fresh smack. Guido comes back in, finds a delayed kill. But this is all about just starting, well, trying to just come up with the plays individually because now you got the sound barrier in here. You've got to survive, and it's not going to happen. Just a win in overtime. The Houston Outlaws are trailing onto the point one at a time, doing the best they can. But now you're going to get a blizzard thrown in by Stratus. You got nowhere to hide if you're Houston. And we're looking at a tied series, one to one. Washington Justice fight back on the second map. Link's is gonna describe it, not even waste time. Straight through the defense. Guido caught in the open. Dante down, but Giannis as well. And this is going to be a very quick push coming in here for the Houston Outlaws. They're at risk of getting overwhelmed. Awesome. Oh, doing it. There it is. The play's at the end. Houston Outlaws, they made us wait, but they get the job done. They will take the lead in the series. Two to one. Really well timed from Dante. He waited for Transcendence to fade before throwing the Blizzard, but Counter Blizzard out. Counter Blizzard's there, and Mooma's gonna go, and this is gonna be the Washington Justice. They need to get rid of Spree fast. There's a chance here. Blinkster has gone to the fist. Gonna get in here to contest. Last second, but it's not enough. And the Washington Justice do not give up. Struggling to make it happen. At the very end, they may get overwhelmed. Washington keeping it together and continuing their streak in this fourth stage. All the kills going their way. Muma's back, squeaking his way into a quick death, and so is Linkser. He's gone. You've got Boink hanging out on the side. He's gonna be the one trying to keep it alive here for his team, but that is going to be the end of it. And the Washington Justice win it in five. Three, two, victory over the Houston Outlaws. There was less pressure, but we really wanted to beat Washington because they're one of the better teams this uh, stage. Friends on that team, like Corey, Sleepy. It's just fun to like, try hardest against like former teammates and like get the satisfaction. Of, or not former teammates, only like Sleepy's a former teammate, but like friends and extra satisfaction when you beat them. Washington's pretty strong right now. I mean, they've beaten some pretty good teams, and I feel like the only time we actually showed some things that we were capable of, like I feel like we still didn't play all that well. 
Like I know Washington's a great team. I'm not like discouraging them or discounting them at all. But I feel like we are capable of more. Like how we play in scrims is not reflected on like how we play in stage. So like, I mean. Um, yeah, I definitely expected it to be close. It's unfortunate that we couldn't win because I feel like there were like a couple maps that we just threw. I feel like people are more like centered and calm in this stage. Maybe that has to do with like, I don't think that has to do with like being knocked out. I think it's more so like, even in like the first couple of ma like matches when we were in it, no one really felt like super nervous. A bit weird stage for us because like, we, ha we have been like so good. Like I, I hate like scrim bucks, but we've been so good in scrims. And like the only time we were able to like actually show what we were capable of is against gladiators. And that is the only team that we beat and we've lost to like worse, worse teams. So it's like kind of like a, kind of a crappy feeling, but. I don't know what we can do. Sorry. Guess the letter. A. E. A and E? Oh my god. A and E. Holy s. Oh my god. Popping E E A. Big Vega! Big Vega! I actually too easy. Too easy. Actually too easy. Yeah, I think it helped a little bit with like just joking around and like taking it easy because um the atmosphere gets like too serious, it might become toxic, and just joking around is a good way to keep it nice and light, calm, and happy, and it just helps everyone play better. It's like when you're tilted or like upset, it's like kind of hard to bounce back, but if you have someone just like making people laugh, then it makes it a lot easier. I mean, going into the last map of the season, it doesn't really have any implications on anything besides Chengdu has to win to get if they want a chance of getting playoffs. Playing upset is like the best kind of thing for you because you have nothing to lose. Like if you're in a position that you're in playoffs already, then you have nothing to lose. And if you're out of playoffs, you have nothing to lose. But you always, as like a competitor, you kind of want to play upset even though that sounds like bad. Because like realistically, it's like, if you have nothing to win, like what, nah. Like we want to play upset and we're going to try super hard to win because like we're competitors, we're not going to give up. There's no point. I'm going to try my hardest like I always do because I, I want to beat every team I can. Like I want to prove why I'm here. And that's all I'm going to think about. So I'm going to try my best against Shengdu. Just, I guess this will be like the last thoughts of the season kind of thing. I guess I just want to say thank you to all the fans for supporting us, and I'm sorry that we failed to qualify for season playoffs again. It really does suck. Like, I thought about, like, I remember how bad it felt last year, and I, like, I put that in my head that I, I don't want that feeling ever to happen again. And all I know is that, like, I'm not going to give up. That's all I can really say. I'm not going to give up, and I'm excited for next season already, and I'm going to put on a show versus Chengdu, so.